Sarah Gonzalez is with us for uh, Off the Rails Thursday. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show. Thanks for Who sitting better? in. You know what I'm doing? I'm kind of lobbying and politicking for um, you just to be a permanent part of this deal. Are you? Well, yeah. I, they just need to pay you more. Yeah. And they need to pay me more for putting up with you. Th- these are both fair statements. Which is actually a pleasure in my life to be able to put up with you. I'm in I'm in, in favor of both of these happening. <laughs> Anthony Russo was our guest yesterday. Uh, he is the host of the uh, Blunt Force Discussion podcast, which you need to check out. He said, uh, he goes, you, uh, he said, Do you and Sarah kind of throw sideways glances at one another. <laughs> I said, well, her husband's literally in the other room right there. So, no, trust me, we don't. Um, it, it's... Uh, we are genuinely good friends. Yeah. I love it when you are on this show. Uh, it's been a rough um, few days for you as well, mm-hmm. for all of us. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of carrying Both each other. Us. We are. We are. That's what best friends do, well, baby. Well, the last two weeks, I haven't been invited to be on the news and why that it was, matters. I had no idea you that that was not know. happening. I had no idea. It's not your fault. It's your producer's fault. <laughs> Someone said uh, the other day on Twitter, because I made the reference that my Watch Chad Prather page on Facebook is most times the, the posts that are on there, I might put one thing on there a day, but most of that is Chris or mm-hmm. some admin here at The Blaze. And uh, somebody made the comment, they said, they under one of my tweets on Twitter, they said, well, since Chris Cruz uh, manages this Twitter account, I said, the F he does. <laughs> I was like, can you imagine what would be happening? It would probably be an incredible Twitter feed if Chris was running it. That's funny. Uh you definitely would have been fired by now. I think so. What do you think, Chris? You think so? You- I say, let's do an experiment. Oh, oh no. God, here we go. <laughs> oh, no. Let's do 48 hours of me tweeting as you. No. See what happens. You know, I'm okay with that. But let's don't tell them which 48 hours. Okay. Done. You just know what like, I'm saying? Like, like, we, like we're not going to start tomorrow right. with that, but we'll we'll see. We'll Let's see how in. that works. I'm yeah. okay with that, and I'll occasionally I'll pop in, and I might I might tweet something myself too. I'm okay. down with that. Let's see what happens. Oh boy! Let's see what happens. I love tacos. <laughs> I love tacos. Thank I you. want a taco on my Twitter. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> That's, I want a taco on my Twitter. Did you see our new shirt that we've got? You see it right there on the screen. I love it. Uh, uh, chadonblaze.com they better go shopping I'm not a taco we've been selling a lot I didn't know if they would sell honestly Chris they better they better send me one to wear yeah to promote. So, I like the colors I like the pastels I do too of that it's very summery uh, you know why they did that it looks good on brown skin <laughs> is that the deal <laughs> is that the deal yeah by the way if you can't tan it to... tone it if you can't tone it tan it what? <laughs> my shout out to Alexander because that was you know, I sent him the quick. idea, and he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, it was on the site really I, quick. I love taking the credit for that. Uh, <laughs> it, whenever people go, "Wow, that was fast," I was like, "It's what we do. It's what we do." <laughs> no, I, you know, I thought about putting it out in my own merchandise store at WatchChad.com yeah. or Prather Tees. I thought about that, and then I was like, I just don't know if people will buy it, right? So but we'll do it on Blaze. Apparently, instead. they're buy- well. It wasn't my idea. Oh. It was it was totally Chris and Alexander. So I, I anyway. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I just love the t-shirt business. It's so go go buy some t-shirts. Uh, where about anyway, I can't talk about my t-shirts on this show, but um, anyway, you can use promo code Chad 10 10% off chadonblaze.com. And uh, while you're over there, just subscribe blaze tv.com and use promo code Chad to save there as well. Uh, because because we're going to get into this. Uh, I don't want to get into this, but last night, or I'm sorry, Tuesday night, I was really pissed off. Mm-hmm. When I saw the the footage that was released for, of the police officers in Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, yeah, I was viscerally pissed off mm-hmm. because here's a group of society that I have defended, and I can't defend this. I, in fact, I'm speaking out against this. These law enforcement officers, whatever you want to call them, I, I don't even want to call them Leos. I don't want to call them law enforcement officers. They're a disgrace to the badge. Cowards. They're a disgrace to the job. They're a disgrace to the legacy of law enforcement. Again, you know, I look, I know there's bad cops out there. There's something going on here. And we're going to try to break this down in overtime. I have, I'm not supposed to have this report. I'm not mm-hmm. supposed to have this report. Someone sent it to me. I can't tell you who. Uh, but this is this is the uh, advanced law enforcement rapid response training. This is their alert training. This is their this is their follow up their assessment. I gave it to you as well. Mm-hmm. 
You read it. Yeah. You were infuriated. What was your response when you read through this? Because we're going to deal with this in overtime. I Honestly, Chad, it's for one of the first, you know, the only times in my life that I have just been rendered completely speechless. Just yeah. it's, it's incomprehensible to read uh, mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. You begin to wonder how is it possible that these people who have trained for this very moment can make this many mistakes. Yeah. It, it just seems utterly incomprehensible. They're on their cell phones. Yes. They're sanitizing their They're sanitizing their, their hand. hands. You know, what are you worried about getting COVID right now? I mean, what the F is going on here? But I want to go through this. And I know there are people who will say, why don't you just do it now instead of doing it behind the paywall? Because I want you to invest in this information. I want you to because if I just put this out in general public and populist, there's going to be a lot of people who misinterpret it. There's going to be people who get a hold of it. I don't want. I want. I want this to be a family conversation. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know me. You know that I'm not out there trying to slay the law enforcement community. I love the law enforcement community. I support them. I mean, my God, we support the law yeah. enforcement community. The things we have done over the years. Um, you know, you want to. You want to Google something. Google Chad Prather. And, and law enforcement and, and you know chad prather cops you'll see videos that i put out there you know i've had cops come to me over the years because i talked about what it's like a day in the life of a police officer i i i can't every time i travel with you and we're going to an event where there is law enforcement there are cops around they always recognize you and tell you thank you yeah oh they always recognize you because that's how close you've been to their community and I don't think that what happened there in Uvalde is representative of the law enforcement community because a lot of people, when I call this out on social media, people say, oh, it's funny, you you conservatives, you right-wingers, you guys want to, uh, all this stuff we've been telling you about cops all these years, now you're echoing it. And I was like, no, mm -mm. no, we're not because mm -mm. you guys lump everybody under the same evil umbrella and I don't, I don't condone that and I certainly don't adhere to it. What I saw here in these videos, this is bullshit. Yeah. This is bad. We're going to talk about it. Um, it's a sad deal. I, it's you know you you think that the, that you want the people who have authority in society to be the best of society, but this is what I've said for a couple of years now. When you when you defund the police, you decry the police, you you run them down as a profession. The good people that should be wearing the badge will stop wearing the badge. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have people who are going to join the ranks who shouldn't have that authority. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that's the case here because I think it's far more nefarious. Whatever the hell is happening in this footage that I'm seeing, far more nefarious. Something is up with this. And we're going to break this thing down from the actual police assessment report this year. So yeah. um, anyway, whoo, I want to get fired up. <sighs> I want to get fired up. This is a, we're already emotional to. anyway. Yeah, life. Yeah, 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 I know. It's not gonna. It's not gonna take too much to push me over the edge. No. And you don't think that like these kind of things could be orchestrated by the government? You know, we there's a clip here, and I want to play it. Pull up that deal of of John Bolton and what he mm. said about himself about orchestrating coups. Okay. Play, play that when you get it, real quick. Brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, yeah. not here, but you know, mm. other places, okay. uh, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work. <laughs> hmm. Uh, bruh. Hmm. <laughs> uh, hmm. I, as somebody who has planned overthrow of the state, mm -hmm. not here, but otherwise, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist <laughs> to uh, overthrow governments <laughs> globally. Uh, that, that, like, it, isn't that kind of threatening? Yes. I mean, basically, I haven't done it here yet. Yeah. Also, if what he's saying is true, that's probably uh, skirting the line of like releasing <laughs> classified information, wow. perhaps, you know? Uh, Want to give us a list of the <laughs> nations you've overthrown, John? Yeah. Which would have been my next question if I was Jake Tapper and actually cared. Are you at a place in life where you look at people and you go, you know, this person, I was told at some point in time to respect them, and I listened to them, and I thought I did respect them years and years and years ago, and now it's like, no, they're really scummy human beings. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, 100%. You, we used to think that we, we had our people, mm -hmm. and now we realize, you know, I had a guy the other day uh, from another, another country, and he said, do you like the bushes? And I go, No. I know exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and, and I'm like, and he's like, oh, we love the bushes. In my country, we love the bushes. I said, well, we don't love them so much here. <laughs> you know? Uh, he might have done you a solid over there in your Eastern Bloc country, but here, 
we've just we've decided we don't like them right you know right. what i'm saying right and I've been i'm actually around just glad w. to know i've been around w and he's one of them folksy good old boys i thought you were talking about a different bush at first so now i've <laughs> now i'm clear <laughs> I was like, wow, that is quite a conversation to be had. Oh. Uh, oh. The that, Bushes. No, the Bushes. Okay. The Bush Dynasty. I love Bush <laughs> beer. I love Bush beer. Uh, that is good stuff. Yeah. But, not, um, not a big fan of, uh, of the Bushes. The Bushes. Yeah. The, the Dynasty. Right, right. This will be the uh, side note, you know, with George P. losing to uh, Ken Paxton, mm-hmm. Attorney General, Thank in the God. primary race. Uh, this is the first time in... F- 45 years, I think. 41, 42 years that a Bush is not in office. no Bush in office. There's no Bush. Uh, That's great. Finally. So... uh, Hope they get gone for good. He has... um, He's uh, he's orchestrated some coups, John Bolton. Um, Great. The... uh, Can we play? (laughs) Let's go back to Hunter. This is the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, gosh. Now, I asked Anthony yesterday. I'm asking you. Why is there not an investigation? Like, why, why is there not a federal investigation on this guy who's, who's literally breaking the law and filming himself doing it? For the same reason that uh, Hillary Clinton is not behind bars right now. <laughs> because if you are the right family and know the right people, then you will well, not be held not, accountable. And, and again, that's not an exaggeration. What she did with the emails and, and getting rid of classified <laughs> information and government information. Yeah. I mean... You, you know, you remember the dude on the nuclear sub? They put him in prison yeah. for, you know, whatever, getting rid of a document or whatever that charge was. Anybody in the military that did what she did, they put him under the jail. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're right in that. Uh, Hunter had a conversation with a hooker. I mean, he did that a lot of times, apparently. And filmed it every single time. I mean, this somehow. dude must have been wearing GoPros. <laughs> he wasn't wearing anything but GoPros. I want to know how his phone was uh, like not just constantly dead from filming on it the entire I, day. I would love to see this setup. As a guy who has spent the last 10 years on a camera, yeah. I would love to know his his hookup <laughs> setup. You know, normally when I do truck videos, I got my little GoPro arm that I put my camera on and I hook it to the dashboard. Or, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. I would love to see what he's doing. Like he's he's like there's some serious pre-production that goes into this guy's sex life. There and is skinny and dipping then life and sometimes drug there's life. Not. <laughs> then sometimes there's because then sometimes you're like mm, I don't think he gave any thought to this angle and what it was going to show. Just zoom yeah, in on his just junk right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've filmed some things in my life, but uh, well, I have. I mean, let's let's go Doesn't ahead. Doesn't everyone? Let's, I mean, let's go ahead and do the blockbuster. But what I discovered a long time ago is that when you film yourself doing certain things, when you watch it back, it does not look like what you had anticipated it was going to look like. Right. It is a, it is a steady, <laughs> fast motion for your finger to hit the delete button. Yep. And get rid of that for all eternity. Yeah. He didn't care. No. He kept every sorted angle that you could with his balls flopping everywhere. And, and just... presumably watched it back over again. Otherwise, why would you film it? I mean, I mean. Uh, can the you guy play? has issues. Can you play the little argument or the what, what, he, what he asked the hooker? Here we go. Sweetheart. Sweetheart. Hey. Hey. Are you okay? Everything fine? Are you hurt in any way? Any, any way, are you hurt? Hey, is anything hurt on you? Anything? I was literally saying, I'm sorry that it took so long to give you $10,000. Do you have any bruise, anything? Is any, have I ever touched you in a bad way? Ever? Have I asked you every time if I could touch you? Uh. Every time. Sweetheart, look at me. Uh. You cannot talk to me that way and say things like that. Because I'm more respectful than anyone you've ever met. <laughs> Are you okay? My what? Here. I thought you said you wanted water. It's the only water I have. Wow. Dude, so much cool. 
was I wanna, really respectful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that when we come back because I'm because I've got a theory. Okay. I've got a theory. I can't wait All to right. hear. Uh, Minutemen Coffee. <laughs> She wanted water. I want coffee. Minutemen Coffee, <laughs> unapologetic in its stance and its love for this country. I went to the door the other day, and uh, they had dropped off a package, and I was like, I don't know. I wasn't expecting a package. I opened it up. Bam. Minutemen Coffee. Three new bags. And you open up that FedEx box. It was like, oh, you just, oh it I just fills up the entire kitchen. Yes. It was incredible. Uh, and then you reach down in there, and guess what they put in it? It's a copy of the Constitution. Every package you get from them, they stick a copy of the Constitution in there. These are good folks, man. Uh, they are patriots, and they want to continue the legacy of the next generation of, of patriots by just sharing the Constitution. Uh, anyway, they didn't raise their prices. Everything out there has from gas to food, everything. They've kept their prices the same, uh, and so you can still get that full pound of that single-origin blended coffee, the same as you always have. They're being faithful to it. Minutemen Coffee, they partnered with Share Life Vacation, so if you sign up for their coffee, coffee club and you go uh you get the uh 95 with free shipping you're going to get two full pounds of amazing coffee delivered to your door for three months and they're going to send you a hundred dollar hotel voucher for well, it's good for seven hundred thousand locations worldwide no strings attached 95 dollars going to get you to the three months of coffee 100 bucks towards a hotel can't beat it you need to go to minutemencoffee.com if you don't like that deal just use chad i spell it chad and get 15 percent off your first order or sign up for that three month coffee subscription and get a hundred dollars towards your next hotel stay minutemen coffee coffee.com we'll be right back hey while i'm thinking about it uh the week of the 25th so not next week but the week after we will not have any new episodes that week I'm going on vacation. Wow. Going, believe it or not, I am going for you. on a vacation. Like a vacation vacation. Like a vacation. Okay. Like I, normally when I go do stuff like I've gone to Mexico or someplace yeah, it's work. exotic, I'm still working. Yeah. Yeah, it's work. Not this time. Wow. I'm ha- you deserve that. I'm I, happy for you. I think I do. In fact, I, in fact, I think I should just come along. Come on. Come on. Get a written, get a note from Steven and come on. Uh I am, yeah. My permission Listen, slip. Dude, she's, my permission she's Mexican. Slip. I don't know if she can get into Mexico. True, true. But I am. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going down. I'm going to hang with the cartels. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, I'm, I'm going to go down to Cabo. Uh, and I'm going to spend Good. a week down there. Five yeah. days. About all I can handle. Yeah. About all I can handle. Um, Monday to Friday. Do you go to the actual beach or do you just hang out by the pool? Like, do you Most do the, the sand pool, thing? I, I will. But, okay. you know, on the, on the, on the, Gulf side over there, or on the whatever that that's rough beach. Yeah, like the it's not sandy. It's not. Right. You get over on the um, you know, the bay, the whatever, the Sea of Cortez, mm-hmm. and the Pacific side. You can like that. Those that ocean will kill you <laughs> down in there on the right. on the eastern side of Cabo. That gets dangerous. You yeah. get out there down on the tip and the point, and I'm geographically ignorant, but the tip. I'm usually drinking when I'm down there, so don't make me <laughs> point directions. Okay. Uh, but people have disappeared in that surf. That's legit. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Oh, I just didn't know if you did the sand because I, I mean I can take a couple days of sand and I'm like I'm not a huge like I'm, I'm not a huge it. fan of a lot of different beaches because the sand's different and I, it gets in places. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good to chill at the pool. That's close to the bar, That's and I, I just want to relax. Yeah. So I'm going on vacation. Um. All yeah. right. So Hunter, here's my theory on that. You ever, you ever got into a you know an altercation you know with somebody you're whatever you know you're you're there and maybe things get a little rough and i'm got i got a feeling things got a little rough here it's, it, that's what it sounds there, like there was an altercation somewhere i don't know if i'm not saying it was rough sex i'm just saying somewhere in there there was an altercation she obviously accused him mm-hmm. and maybe that's why he's always got the damn camera going because he's trying to protect mm-hmm. from accusations from these people Maybe. Who who are going to say? Oh, maybe he's got a weird. Here he is. Look at the this little is, montage here oh of him gosh. slinging it around, lighting but up his crack pipe. Maybe he's got a little rough kink. Ooh, okay, okay. I'm thinking there's a little rough kink. All right, but he just paid her ten thousand dollars. Like get get so, a little rough with him. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money. These are hard times. He boxes man. jaws, whatever God. turns him on. But you know, like when when. There was they tried to they tried to blackmail Dave Portnoy. Yes. With yeah. with sex tapes. Yeah. yeah. That came out. That's great. And he was a little rough. I mean, it was like, all right. You watched it? Yeah, I watched it. I didn't watch it. It was a little strong. 
It's a little strong. But was I mean, there consent? I've done worse. Was there consent? I'll just say, I There's mean, he, that wasn't, angle. he wasn't beating her up or anything. He just, she did. She seemed to be liking it. That's that, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If she liked it. But I got a feeling here. My theory is homie has a kink and I think he likes for it to get a little wild. He, yeah. he likes, you know, he probably puts electrodes on his nipples. Look, she just put his, her foot on his chest. Yeah, he did get Look a, at this. a foot job too. What's going on right now? Whoa! Whoa! Oh. Ugh. God, wow. He is so gross. Okay, yeah. It's like... It's still going. It's still happening. It's still, this is still this happening. This is still going. Ooh, I, I'm getting dizzy. That's how many videos there are. There's... there's. Oh, you can just keep on going. There's like... It's like two minutes of this montage God. of this whole thing. And if that's the you know smartest guy Joe knows right so you, there. So you say this, but a reasonable person would say, okay, so what I want is to be filming the things that I need to be able to prove I didn't I didn't right. do it, right? But also not filming the things that I don't want people to see, like, like all of my illegal crack. drugs. <laughs> like measuring out crack. Seems but like see, you'd I wanna... just feel like that's what's going on here is mm -hmm. he needed to document these experiences not so he could come back and be like, oh, yeah, I want to watch this later to get yeah. all turned on. Yeah, yeah. But because, look, I don't know. Listen, this dude's having so much sex with hookers. I don't know when you got time to watch it back and get off on it's that. True. So, like, dude, you're getting the real thing. That's true. Why do you need to pull up the hard drive? Yeah, that's so, a good point. I mean, Maybe that is. You know, uh, 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 but for Pete, the record, Pete O'Peter sending him tens of thousands of dollars for hookers. Yes. So, you know. But for the record, going up to someone afterwards and telling them, I didn't hurt you. Yeah, I didn't hurt you. Is, is there a bruise on you? Are right. you okay? It's not really Did the I same. Did I do something to hurt you? <laughs> Here, let me. He's trying to smooth it over. Yeah. He's the most respectful person that she knows. <laughs> you said you wanted water. Uh, you know, in a. In and a, Chad. In an ice pack. <laughs> I don't know if this is not politically correct. It's probably not. So how much, like, no awareness of, like, your value of your life when you are apologizing to a hooker? <laughs> like, That's a great point. That. Like, so Charlie much? Sheen famously said, I don't pay hookers for sex. I pay them so they'll leave in the morning. That's funny. Like, I don't, I, like, I, he could, Charlie right, Sheen could get, get sex, sex, but he's like, I, I'm not paying for sex. I'm right. paying for them to leave. Right. So, again, it's a disrespectful, manipulative industry mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. puts a woman at risk and for abuse and all these horrible things. But I get your point, Chris. You're like, it's if, a hooker. If I'm paying you $10,000, I don't need to say sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't care about listen, your feelings. This I is know, not I, an emotional I was, I'm just thing. thinking of these stories that I want to tell. I look, I know I know of probably don't. I know of men who have <laughs> gotten their don't. asses beat mm -hmm. by pimps. Oh. Well, not the pimp, but the people they send. The handlers, the handlers or whatever you want to call them, wow. the heavies. Uh I know of some like I could call names of some well known people who were having a weekend in Vegas and uh, got their asses beat because they either rejected the woman and I don't want that or wow. didn't want to pay. You oh, know you what I'm saying? To, yeah, you need to tell me during break. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and then suddenly you see them and they got a black eye. Wow. So I'm just saying it goes both ways yeah. in that regard. This is, you're, you're having a business transaction. Right. A very disgusting business transaction. But it is, yeah. I'm, I'm will negotiate these terms. What are you willing to do? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm willing to pay you. Mm -hmm. And did, we both have an expectation going into this thing. So I'm just basically digging a hole for myself by even saying all these things. <laughs> but I'm trying to smooth over as well what Chris said because he's not wrong. No, he's in not that. Wrong. I mean, he's, you know, I don't, did I, did I hurt you in any ways or something on you? Sweetheart. 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 He's obviously, he's brought it down an octave. Uh, he's trying to be calm here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somewhere deep in the, in the crack euphoria, <laughs> he slapped a girl. <laughs> I mean, he did something she didn't like. Uh, but clearly. which leads me to think, again, we're being facetious here, but with a point we are, yeah. but, but in our tongue and cheekness, I think that's why he was filming all the things. Yes. I, I truly think that's sense. why. Yes. 
because I think there was some wild stuff going on, and he wanted to cover his ass. It le- you know, like... I thought he wanted something in his ass. <laughs> I bet you there's been some things, like little army men. He did not want to cover it. Matchbox cars. He, he did, wanted... Chad, he did the opposite of cover his ass. His ass was always out. Always. <laughs> I mean, it's still out. There was a two-minute... <laughs> Put the th- lower third back up there again. Put that back up there for Sarah. You- Put it... Hunter Biden, oh sex life God, expert. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Whatever. I'm talking about Hunter Biden's sex life way too damn much at this point. But, but can, can I ask really quickly, yeah. what do you think, like, what is he doing right now as everyone on the internet watches all of these videos of him? Crying like what? tweeting. Chad, it's, a, it's an important question to ask because think about it. Over uh, 4th of July week, yeah. weekend, the event, who was right up front of the litter? Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. Biden. Same then, as Easter. During yeah. the fireworks, who was in the balcony? The iconic balcony shot was Hunter mm-hmm. Biden. Mm-hmm. This is stuff that we're not supposed to be seeing for, because he's recording twins. Like, what is he doing right now? What is he doing right now? Is why he is, in hiding? Why yeah. is President Biden is nobody he- saying like, yo, we literally know the entire physique of your son his penis size, everything. <laughs> uh, that's a cool. Peter Ducey needs to ask about that. Um, <laughs> we went, went from penis size to Peter Ducey. Peter Ducey. Yeah. I, I, I really, I just would love to know. Like, is he just on some uh, day days long crack binge because he's just so pissed that he's I, I, hiding? You know, I don't know. I, I, I tend to think den. probably surely not. I would think surely not. They've got him low key. Lock and key. Secret services. Down low yeah. as much as they can in the basement, low. padded cell. <laughs> um, you know, feed him. I mean, he's, feed ma- him. he's probably smoking he's six married. packs a day. He's got a kid with his new wife. And that's in addition to the one they don't talk about. The one they don't talk about, the illegitimate one. <laughs> the stripper baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, Lily, you know what? I'm going to take an extra 30 seconds here. And I just want to give credit where it's due. I, I want to talk for a second and change. Let's get off this topic. <laughs> my, my, my dude, Eric July, killing the game. Yeah. The Ripaverse. Uh, Ripaverse Comics. And, of course, he's a Blaze TV contributor. You'd know him. Uh, he's putting Woke Marvel in D.C. to shame with the jaw-dropping sales. They've raised like a million dollars. Over a million now. Crowdfunded a million dollars. You know, the initial pre-order campaign target of, of $100,000 in sales. Total wow. sales revenue for July. First comic series already approached a million in just one day. That's what I'm talking about right there. $1.3 million, Eric July. And let me tell you something. When he was telling me about writing a comic book, I was like, okay. And then I started seeing the size and the scale of the operation and the, and the pure excellence with which he was doing his business. The way you do it when you're passionate about your values and convictions. Eric July, God bless you, my brother. I am proud to call you my friend. I'm thankful for the success. And uh, I'm just excited to see what's going to come out. I hope he takes over the world of comics yeah. and i think he's on his way well i mean it's look i'm just glad that he's uh you can obviously relate to this he's joining us as an entrepreneur trying to help create this parallel economy yeah. and give conservatives or just people who aren't completely woke and haven't gone insane Dude. a place to put their money insane insane so um congratulations eric god bless you and uh keep doing what you're doing man uh, i'm freaking work. proud of it all right, uh, we're heading into uh, some bad days, folks. I want you prepared. We're dealing with huge problems, but the problems are getting huger, and they're just all converging at the same time. Inflation, gas prices, food shortages, conflict abroad. Uh, we do have a perfect storm going on, so if you don't want to be a victim, go to preparewithchad.com. I'm going to get you a special deal where you can save $150 on a three-month emergency food kit from my friends at My Patriot Supply. Uh, it's a food kit that contains a wide variety of delicious meals. It's good food. It's not bunker food. They're going to last three solid months per person, plus they're going to provide you with more than 2,000 calories a day, which is what you need. It's what you need, folks. Uh, My Patriot Supply, is those kits are something every family needs. uh, And you're going to wish you had it if you didn't um, when the time comes. Go to preparewithchad.com. I'm going to get you $150 savings per kit. It's going to ship fast, free. Unmarked boxes are going to show up at your door. Preparewithchad.com. We'll be right back.
All right, folks, it is that time in the show, that time where I attempt to wax eloquent. Folks, I want to start out by telling you a little bit about an obscure figure from history that you may or may not have heard about. He was a decorated hero of the First World War, not just a veteran who fought in the trenches on the Western Front, but someone who risked his life to try to save fellow wounded soldiers. He was, at various points in his life, both an artist and a patron of the arts. He painted beautiful landscapes and serene cityscapes that are still looked at today. He was a political philosopher who wrote extensively on the subject and attracted the admiration of millions for offering economic solutions in the midst of the worldwide Great Depression. And indeed, he helped to get his own country's economy restarted after it had slumped seemingly beyond repair into hyperinflation. Sounds like a great dude, right? Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, he also was named Adolf Hitler. And he did some other stuff that has colored his otherwise rosy reputation down through the decades ever since. So we have fixed firmly in our mind the illustration. Uh, let, let's get down to the actual person I want to talk to you about today in case you either weren't paying attention in history class or on the off chance that you went to <laughs> an American public school. Uh, Monticello is the home that Thomas Jefferson not only had built, but which he designed himself. And apparently those who curate that home as a museum today have now decided that the time has come to go woke in their retelling of the Jefferson story. Now, as you'll often hear people on the right say, Jefferson was a complicated man. He was a brilliant thinker. He he was a great writer, as is most prominently evidenced in the Declaration of Independence, Independence, which we're all familiar with today as being a somewhat important document to the founding of our country and the establishment of the free society we all enjoy, whether we all like to admit it or not. And yes, Jefferson was complicated, though maybe not as complicated as we like to think. The left, and indeed it seems specifically the people running the Monticello Museum, would like you to view Thomas Jefferson precisely the way I just viewed Hitler. The idea is that none of the good Hitler did in his life mattered because he was a mass murdering lunatic. And yes, in the case of Hitler, that's the right way to go. But the comparison, it's all off when you go to Monticello now. You're apparently greeted to a ticket booth in a gift shop featuring critical race theory books by Ibram X. Kendi and Tanisi Coates. You're, you, you know who I'm talking about. You're going to get lectures along the way about how Jefferson purchased land that was previously owned by Native Americans, how he had a long-term affair with Sally Hemings, one of his slaves, and supposedly had six children by her. What you're increasingly not going to hear is how much of an impact this man had on the foundation of our country. So what makes the Hitler-type argument not apply to Jefferson? Well, it's nuance. That's what. Jefferson owned slaves, slaves he inherited, and slaves which he likely could not get rid of given the laws of the day concerning debt. Jefferson also worked to end slavery. Lefties don't want to hear it, but he did. Read the first draft of the Declaration of Independence, the one that got struck down by colonies who didn't want to end slavery, the one he had to compromise on because otherwise there would be no chance at winning freedom from England. He wasn't a perfect man, but the historical weight of the good he did for people living in this great land of every color has lost neither its weight nor its luster in the eyes of the balanced and well-informed beholder. You see, the little thought experiment we just did with Hitler, well, that's a single layer of an analysis, and sometimes that's an easy thing to do. You kill six million people in a race-driven holocaust and millions more in an unnecessary world war over territory, it's not that much of a stretch to write you off. Don't let people put Jefferson in the same category just because they can use the same rubric. It's shallow, folks. It's misguided. And it's ultimately dangerous when we live in a world where truly understanding history is the best means we have of not repeating it and its evils. Now, I hope that the estate who owns Monticello eventually gets around to firing the woke people who work there. And I really hope they do. And I hope they will restore Jefferson's good name there. In the meantime, it's up to me and the friends and neighbors, we have to carry the torch of true history and light up a dark and very, very dumb world. Mm. Amen. Amen. They're, they're, they're killing our history, Sarah. Of course they are. Um, they it's can't, bad. They can't convince everyone to do all of the things they want them to do if they teach real history. Yeah. It's, it, and again, it's a useless generation everybody's lazy. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do anything. They don't even want to think because thinking is uncomfortable. Right. So let's give ourselves an excuse. 
Instead of looking back at history and saying, wow, these were great men. What was it Maisie Hirono said mm -hmm. about, well, we can't trust the founding fathers because nobody really knows what they were talking about right. anyway. No basically. one knows what they meant. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. Can you yeah. throw that up there, Chris, if you got it? Oh, yeah, that's and, really bad. And I'm like, you know, she tweets this thing out and uh, put it up there. Originalism, they, uh, the justices who take that approach go all the way back to our founding fathers and pretend that they know what our founding fathers meant when they drafted the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I use the word pretend because who the heck would, should, would, would know what our founding fathers meant? Um, <laughs> is there any reference to AR-15 rifles? Oh my God. How would God. we know? Uh, so uh, we stupid. pretend to know. Is there any reference? I mean, it's not like they left us some notes. No, it's not, no. Like, it's not like there were a couple of documents. You know, of maybe like not. some Federalist Papers or something like that. No, and, I mean, no, there, no, there no. Was, it's they weird. Were, it was just hieroglyphics on a cave. You so know, we couldn't nobody really it. knows how to interpret yeah. the man throwing a spear at a bear and what that means <laughs> right. in cave drawings it's or the, or the bloody hand on a volleyball. It's too confusing. There's no nuance. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell is she talking about? <laughs> How so stupid. do we continue to give credence to these idiots, these morons, to pretend to know what the founding fathers meant because they didn't reference AR-15s? They would have if they could have. And by the way, folks, I did a little study on this recently and put it on social media when I pointed out that from the time George Washington was born to the time George Washington died, you know what happened to uh, weaponry in their day? It advanced and got better and more efficient. You know why? Because men have always tried to find more effective and efficient ways to kill each other. Mm -hmm. Because I want to make sure that I kill you before you kill me. They also were very clear on that whole shall not be infringed. That's pretty all-encompassing. I mean, shall not. <laughs> Listen, if, if, if a hooker says to Hunter Biden, you shall not put that in my butt. <laughs> It's very, clear, it's very clear, and you can usually watch the tape back <laughs> of what she meant. That is. Because afterwards, if you go, are you hurt in some way? And she's sitting gingerly on that <laughs> recliner because her ass is tore up. Then you know what? You violated her shall not. <laughs> so I am pretty much understand no means no. <laughs> and when the founding fathers said it, I can kind of decipher that shit, Maisie. I don't know... What aloha language you learn, <laughs> but I started out with English and I have a I have a I have a way of interpreting that besides my my like a like a lock em. <laughs> <laughs> What is she talking about with she, this whole thing? She doesn't know. She's one of Look, the bar is very low because I keep I keep looking at all of these lawmakers uh on the left and I'm like AOC is definitely the dumbest one. And then I hear <laughs> this, and I'm like, There's a nope, dude that, There was the dude that Rono. said Guam might tip over. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I mean, that's, that's some dumb shit right there. Oh, my God. Somebody said somebody said to me recently, they said, you, your show, they're like, you have some inner turmoil. You cuss too much, and you get, the things you're saying, is it's just a little too crude. If you could see the stuff that gets thrown <laughs> yes. my way day in and day out for yeah. the last 10 years of my life, yeah. you know what? I'm done playing nice with this deal. I'm done calling it what it is. I don't want to get along with Maisie Hirono. Yep. I, you know what? She wants me dead. Yes. She wants me and my kind dead. Yes. All right? 100%. They want all of us dead. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or who you voted for or if you're out there defending Hunter Biden and his sexcapades. They want you dead. Bill Gates wants you dead. George Soros wants you dead. All the big government guys, all of them, R's, D's, I's, I don't give a sh. They all want you dead. Yep. So I'm done defending them. And if I say shit every now and then, well, shit. <laughs> 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 Woo! I'm hanging on by a thread. <laughs> oh, God. Americans are discovering that if we want to change this nation, we have to change the way the marketplace works. <laughs> Woke corporations are seeking to divide us. Big banks are freezing the accounts of people who disagree with their political views. And our supply chain is dependent upon countries that actively work against our values. It's time for a change. And that change starts with you and your wallet. That's why I am proud to partner with Public 
Square, Public SQ, the largest network of patriotic, freedom-loving businesses and consumers our nation's ever seen. Public SQ, S Square, I, I just call it Public Square, Public SQ, that's the app, is the first app to connect freedom-loving Americans with their local community and the businesses that share those values. Whether you want to support a restaurant that only buys from local farms, a coffee shop that took a stand against COVID mandates, or a bank that would never cancel you for your political views, Public Square is your guide. There's also interactive, sensor-free community groups where you can connect with other local members. And here's the best part. It's absolutely free to join. Just download the Public SQ app from the Apple Store or Google Play. Create an account. Begin your search. You can also list your business for free so your local community can support you as well. Download the app. It's Public SQ. That's Public SQ. Download it today. We'll be right back. All right, so back in m- 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 March, I think it was, I predicted that we would be at 10% inflation by the end of the year. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I was really wrong. I, I didn't know that as the press secretary and many others have said, this is the strongest economy that we've had in quite a long time here in, in these good old U.S. of A. Uh, you know, uh, well, here's the problem. I was wrong because... We're going to get there faster than the end of the year. Uh, <laughs> inflation Good has news. hit a whopping 9.1%, uh, raising risk of 1% interest rate hike. Um, I believe it's higher than that. You know, I don't. That's not the real number. Yeah. It's, higher it's higher than that. It, yeah. it, 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 it is higher than yeah. that. And yeah. depending on how you do the math, I mean, you mm-hmm. know, you can look at some things are as high as 54%, 60%. I mean, I'm just saying anyone who goes to the grocery store and does their normal grocery shopping and, you know, is doing all of their normal uh, going about their business is seeing that this is way more than yeah. 9.1%. Yeah. So if anybody, you know, down like, say, Montgomery County, Texas, like you have a nice little place you want to rent me. <laughs> Because I don't want to buy anything. You just want to rent me with a house or something like that. And I'll take care of it. I think you know I'm pretty good to pay the bills, Mm -hmm. take care of things. If y'all want to do that, because I don't want to buy anything. And if you're you're thinking of buying a house right now, hit the damn brakes. Hit the brakes. Uh, Call me. Uh, Like, seriously. I'm ready to vacate. I'm ready to get out. I'll come up here and I'll do the show. I'll do the show. But I'm ready to vacate. I'm ready to go hide. I'm ready to go hide. I'm, I'm ready to build that bunker. I'm ready to dig that hole, build that bunker. Look, they're gonna they're, they're gonna about to drop nukes on New York anyway. Well, that's New York. You think they're gonna stop there? <sighs> you live in Dallas, Texas. That's fair. You know, in the last uh, Jack Carr book, you know where the, you know mm-hmm. where they hit the bio weapon. They did it in Richardson. Really? Yes. Oh no. Thanks, Jack Carr. Oh no. <laughs> Richardson, Texas. A suburb of Dallas. That's where the bio weapon. And you know what the you know what the plan was on the part of the federal government in Jack Carr's book? What? Uh, which I think that's the end the blood book. Uh, if y'all are watching Terminal List right now on Prime, this this is that series, the James Reese series. So are you about to give them a spoiler? No, okay. no, you'll know this because one alert. one of the plans was the federal government had this little uh, feather in their cap is they could bomb the shit out of an American city and annihilate the population because if there was a bioweapon and we were spreading a disease, oh. then the then then the federal government could just bomb it, boom, just incinerate the people there, just level the city, yeah. and that would contain it. Oh. And let me tell you something. When Jack Carr writes about it, it's built on a lot of truth. <laughs> a lot of truth. <laughs> uh anyway, so here we are. Great. Can we play a TikTok? Yeah. Do it. See I'm smart, so like this is nothing. When did the Boston Tea Party take place? Seventy five. Oh. Idiot. Well, which of these was not one of 13 original colonies? Uh, no. no. Uh. Okay. Um, where is... Why would I know this? Literally, why would I know this? Where is Mount Rushmore? Oh, my god. She said New Mexico. What year was okay, the declaration... On. This is, like, You got upsetting. this. No. Uh-huh. Which president served three consecutive? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They they just cut her off. Cut her off. It's like you failed. You're, That's you're like done. taking your nurse practicum. Yeah. You know when you when you've passed or failed, the test just cuts off. They were just like, we're done with this. Why even try? And then, but the, but then she posted it. 
Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's the thing is that yeah. she's not embarrassed enough. You know why? To not post because it. they think being stupid is cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. They think being stupid like that is cool. She knows all her pronouns. Did you see? Did you see the video, the street video, where somebody was asking who the president was before Ronald Reagan, and nobody could answer. No. And then I think they were asking who was the president before Donald Trump. A lot of them couldn't answer. No. And they were like laughing about it. They think it's cool to be that stupid. Because why well, would you want to know things? And well, I mean, that's clearly not what they're learning in school. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're not going to be useful to the New World Order either, sister. So <laughs> guess what? You'll be the first one they poison and dump your body in a mass grave, you ignorant. <laughs> With the recent rulings from the Supreme Court, it's <laughs> worth mentioning that these wins didn't happen on their own. No, it took the support of companies like Patriot Mobile. I love these guys. They've passionately fought on behalf of the unborn and your constitutional rights. And Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative mobile phone provider. They've been on the front lines fighting for your values for a long time. This is why Patriot Mobile is different from every other provider out there. Inflation's made it really hard on a lot of Americans uh, in every way. Thankfully, Patriot Mobile has plans for almost any budget, and they offer the same nationwide coverage as all the major carriers. So get the same great service, plus the knowledge that your money's going to a company fighting for the sanctity of life, religious freedom, and the Second Amendment. Go to patriotmobile.com slash chad or call them. 972 Patriot. Use offer code CHAD. You know how I spell it? I spell it Chad. And they will get you free activation on your new service. If you're a veteran or first responder, tell them. They'll give you even more discounts. Come join our movement. Make the switch today. PatriotMobile.com slash Chad. The promo code is Chad. Or call them up at 972 Patriot. Don't move. We're not done. All right, watchchad.com. Uh, listen, tomorrow night, come to Goliad, Texas, if you're in that area, somewhere in that 50-mile radius. Come to Schrader Hall. We're going to have a good time there. The Ragamuffins will be with me. And uh, we're going to have some good times. We're going to um, have a fun Texas night. Uh, Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Go search Sarah Gonzalez TX on subscribe and subscribe to her new YouTube. Uh, you. Tell your friends to subscribe to my YouTube as well, Chad Prather, where they can get the show. And, of course, go to blazetv.com slash chad and uh, sign up use promo code chad for an annual subscription go uh to chad on blaze.com get your t-shirt get your socks get your taco shirt all that good <laughs> stuff use code uh chad 10 anywhere uh, and save what do we got oh overtime you don't want to miss it folks we're going to break down this uh uvalde uh report here and uh yeah don't miss it subscribe and watch we love you sarah thank you thank you god bless you talk to you next time bye <laughs>